Welcome back to the fourth part of our SAP Tech Byte series on getting started with SQL Script in SAP HANA Cloud. In this video, we'll take a look at anonymous blocks and show you how to debug stored procedures as well. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's continue on right where we left off in our uh, tutorial group. Um, so for this video, we're gonna work on the anonymous blocks tutorial and then move right into the debugging store procedures. Um, so let's go ahead into the anonymous blocks and we'll move this to my other monitor here. Okay. Um, so for this tutorial, we're gonna spend uh, all of our time in the database explorer as opposed to the um, SAP Business Application Studio. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll open up a um, SQL console tab simply by clicking this, this button up here in the corner. And um, for an anonymous block, um, well, firstly, anonymous block, what is it? Um, so this anonymous blocks allow us to, um, to execute SQL script code on the fly without having a specific container, for example. Uh, we don't have to manage the life cycle of a procedure or function or library. We can just execute the SQL script code in the SQL console and get our results without having to maintain the create statement, create and drop statements of a procedure or function. So kind of handy for testing little code snippets of, of SQL script code. Um, that's mainly what I use it for, um, uh, but yeah, pretty handy. Uh, so the first thing we do is we have a, a do statement with a begin and an end, okay? Um, with anonymous blocks, we can have, um, we can have a signature, uh, we could have input and output parameters or none at all. Uh, in this case, we're going to have, um, we're going to ma match the, the signature of our get PO header data procedure. So the next step here is to actually copy the, the body of that procedure into our anonymous block. So that's what we're going to, to, to do here. We're just going to execute the, the code that was within our um, get PO header data procedure as an anonymous block here. So we can go to our procedures folder and we can open this up. And we can look at the create statement here. We can go ahead and pull out uh, the body. And we'll put that right here between our begin and end. And then the next, the next one says to copy out the signature. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll put that right after the do. Move our begin back here like this. Whoops. Okay. And because this is an anonymous block um, and we have to have a placeholder for our, our output parameter to, to go into, um, we do like a, an equals arrow sign to a question mark here. And that's our placeholder for, um, for when we execute this and the results come back to us, okay? So this looks good. I think we did everything right. Uh, now all we really need to do is execute this. And just like that, our results come back in our table, just as if we would have executed the procedure. But again, this is just executing the code that was in th in, within our procedure as a standalone um, SQL script uh, anonymous block. Okay, again, very handy for testing um, small pieces of code uh, during your, develop your development. Okay, moving on. Um, we can explore how to debug stored procedures. So let's go ahead and close this. And the first part is to actually open up our procedure. 
So right click on get PO header data and say open for debugging. Um, this dialog comes up and we're going to take the defaults here and just go ahead and click OK. We can set a breakpoint. So let's set a breakpoint at line 14. So our procedure is now ready to be debugged. So we can go ahead and uh, generate a call statement for this. So right click on the procedure and say generate call statement. That gives us another SQL console here. And here we can go ahead and click execute. And then control is then passed back to our debugger. So you can see that our, 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 our progress has stopped at line 14. Um, some things to note here in the debugger pane. Um, it shows that it's it stopped at line 14 here. Um, you have a box for um, your variables and expressions. Um, like if we open up the, um, the output here, you can see that it shows our output parameter. Also shows uh, any system variables that, that, that might, be, uh, might, might be here. Um, and as we step through this, this, this variable box will change. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and step, step to the next statement. You notice another another um, a local uh, name has showed up here, and under local, this is our intermediate table variables. In this case, PO create count, and you can see that it contains 33 rows. So, what if we wanted to look at what's in that table? Well, we can highlight that and then click the display content, and then we can see what's in that table. Okay. Um, we can use the expression editor also. So um, we can go ahead and click this add watch expression. And in this case, module type is SQL script. And we can actually put in some SQL script code or, or some SQL in here. So like select star from PO create count where create count is less than 30. So we can put some simple SQL in here and we can query the intermediate table variables based on some condition. So I can go ahead and add that. And you can see here, um, it shows me that this result table, um, this expression would result in 15 rows. And again, we can go ahead and look at this as well. Okay, pretty handy. And we can continue forward. Um, by go ahead and stepping through um, to the very end. And as you can see, as we do that, um, the other intermediate table variables become visible under local. And we can also see the results. Once we're past the, the last lex statement there, we can also see the, the output, um, the output that's being passed to the output parameter, All right? And if we continue, uh, we click the resume button here. Control is then passed back, back, back to the SQL console where our results are then shown um, in the SQL console. So that's basically how we are debug our, our stored procedures in SAP HANA Cloud. So that wraps up this fourth part of our series on getting started with SQL script in SAP HANA Cloud. Join us for the final part, part five, where we will look at how to manipulate intermediate table variables using index-based cell access and table variable operators.